Let's take a look at the attitudes of women at the time that Priestley's play was set. And his spectacles were set in 1912. At the time, even upper class women had few options in life and were expected to behave in certain ways. Women were not even supposed to hear serious conversations. Mrs. Burling and Sheila leave the dining room to let the men talk about serious issues. Mr. Burling later tries to send Sheila away when the inspector arrives. He does this because he does not think she should listen to serious, unpleasant topics. Expectations of upper class women. In this patriarchal, meaning male ruled society, even upper class women had very few options in life. They are raised to be well educated. They were always to make their fathers and then their husbands look good. They showed off their husband and father's wealth by dressing in the finest fashions and throwing and going to the best social events. So to recap that, the expectations of upper class women, women in the early 20th century were that they were raised to be well educated. Their role was to make their husbands and fathers look good, and they showed off their husbands or fathers' wealth by, well, by dressing in the finest fashions and throwing and going to the best social events. Eva Smith. Breezy didn't just choose a low class person, he chose a low class woman to be the focus of the story. He did this to highlight inequalities of this long suffering part of society. Society treatment of Eva. Society did not value Eva Smith at all because she was a low class woman. She only had a few options for improving her life. Society did not care about the lower class, so people needed jobs to be able to live. Her employment struggles. When Eva keeps losing jobs because of the burden, she doesn't have many options. She needs to earn enough money to eat and have a roof over her head. When she is fired from her jobs, she has no choice but to turn to prostitution, which means accepting money for sex. When she turns away from that and then is rejected from Mrs. Burley's charity, she truly has no options left. The male treatment of Eva. Throughout the play, men use and dismiss Eva. People think she's morally corrupt because she's of the lower class and female. Let's read that. How does Eva try to make money after she's been fired from her job? Does she do it by stealing from the Burlings, handing out leaflets, prostitution, or selling drugs? The correct answer is that she has to become prostitute. Which of these are true about Eva? Do men use her and dismiss her, or do they respect her? Unfortunately, the answer is that they use and dismiss her. Is she saved from her despair when Mrs. Burling gives her financial help? Or does she have no options left when Miss, Mrs. Burling's charity doesn't help her? The correct answer is that she has no options left. Does she willingly turn to prostitution when she doesn't get a pay rise? Or does she have no choice to turn to prostitution after she's fired from her job? The correct answer is that she has no choice but to turn to prostitution. Do people take pity on her because she's of the lower class? Or do people think she's morally corrupt because she's the lower class and female? But to answer, people think she's morally corrupt. The Burlings and Gerald treat and, abuse, treat and abuse Eva incredibly badly. And this is how they do, treat a lower class woman and women in general. Eric forces himself on Eva. He threatens to cause problems for her if she doesn't let him into her home where he will have sex with her. Mr. Burling sees women as expendable, meaning they aren't needed. He feels that he can just hire others and ones that he employs become a problem. Mrs. Burling does turn Eva away from the charity. She does this partly because Eva used Mrs. Burley's name as her own, but Mrs. Burling also does this because she refuses to believe that a lower class woman could have any morals and would refuse stolen money. She thinks Eva must be lying. Gerald uses Eva for sex because she's young and pretty. She feels he can use her as long as she wants, and Eva thinks he's helping her. Let's recap that. Which of these are true about how characters use and abuse Eva Smith? Mrs. Burling turns Eva away from her home, or does Mrs. Burling turn Eva away from the charity? The correct answer is she turns her away from the charity. Does Eric force himself on Eva, or does he use Eva for sex because she's young and pretty? The correct answer is he forces himself upon her. Does Gerald force himself on her, or does he use her for sex because she's young and pretty? The correct answer is that Gerald uses Eva for sex because she's young and pretty. But Mr. Burling, does he refuse to employ Eva? But, or does he feel he can fire and replace female employees when they become a problem? The correct answer is that he feels he can fire and replace female employees when they become a problem. What were the expectations of women in 1912 when the play was set? For upper class women, they showed off their husbands and fathers well. They were raised to be well educated, and their role was to make their fathers and husbands look good. They weren't supposed to hear serious conversations. For example, Mr. Berlin tries to send Sheila away when the inspector arrives, doesn't think she should listen to serious and pleasant topics. Mrs. Burling and Sheila leave the room to let the men talk about serious issues. What are the reasons that people think Eva is more corrupt? Firstly, it's because she's a class. And then, because she's female. 
One is Mrs. Burning turning in waiting. She leaves Mrs. Burning's neighbour's home and she refuses to believe that a lower class woman could have any morals and would refuse 